everyone, I am Carolise. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be having a very interesting discussion. We are talking about talking today. We're talking about how to talk like a business analyst. So I'm going to be walking you through some common phrases that you might be using in your everyday discussions. But when you're talking as a business analyst, here's how is a better way to say that very same thing. Okay. So we're going to be having that kind of discussion today in this video. I hope it's going to be useful for you. It's going to be more helpful for the existing business analysts who are already working in the field. But if you're looking to start your career, it's also going to be useful for you to know how to have the lingo, the jargons, how to speak the speak, right? So that's what we're going to be doing today. Stay tuned. So welcome back. So we're talking about how to talk like a business analyst today. And so what I'm going to be sharing with you will be ways that you can rephrase what you're already saying in a way that's more business analyst friendly. Now I'm not talking about when you're eliciting requirements from your stakeholders, when you're having discussions to understand their world. The, what I'm going to be sharing with you is not for that. That conversation, it's best to use the simplest language possible so you can connect with your stakeholders. You can understand what they're talking about. They can understand you. I mean, you want to be very, very clear, very clean, very simple when you're talking with um, your stakeholders because you don't want terms to confuse what they understand and what you understand from them. So this, what I'm sharing with you today is not going to be for having elicitation discussions. It's going to be when you're talking to your management team, when you're talking to executives and talking to product managers or project managers, this is the kind of lingo that you use the words, the phrases, the way you express yourselves to conjure up, uh, you know, confidence in what you're saying and to use the terms that they are using so that you can have the same understanding. Like you, you, you kind of meet them where they already are. So it's really conversations that you're having with executives, project managers, product managers, and your team, um, in your team meetings and things like that. Okay. So just ways that you can say things to build more confidence in what you're saying and just be more professional basically. Okay. So one of the things that we say a lot when we are doing business analysis, when we're talking to stakeholders and all that stuff, when we go into a meeting or we're explaining what we're doing, we might be tempted to use phrases like talk to people, talk to the people in this department, um, talk to the customers. Like that's kind of how we colloquially say things. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you are talking to people, right? But a more elegant way to say that would be to have discussions with stakeholders. Okay. So the stakeholder could be the team member. It could be customer. It could be exec. It could be anybody. Right. But it's not saying talking to people, just use the phrase discuss with stakeholders, or you could say subject matter experts, if that's a very known term, um, with the people you're talking to, or you could say SME, everybody knows what SME is. So, use that phrase instead of saying talking to people. I think it's just a more elegant way of saying it and it really does build confidence that you know what you're doing. The other thing that we say a lot of is, you know, get agreement. So you have this new design, you have this new process, you have this new workflow and you might be tempted to say, I'm going to do, you know, different sessions to get agreement on this, the new process. And that sounds great, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But when you're talking to executives, you're talking to management, when they hear get agreement, it can make them anxious because they know that you'll never find everybody agreeing on anything. If I put 10 people into a room and I say the wall is beige, somebody's going to say, no, it's eggshell or it's, I don't know, light brown or it's cream like people just you can't find everybody agreeing on anything and it also makes them feel nervous because they might think that you are a people pleaser and so you're going to wait for everybody to agree before you move forward and they hear delay because they know that everybody's not going to agree so the project is going to be delayed because you're waiting for this agreement and you're going to spend time wasting everybody's time in different different meetings trying to get them to agree and that's going to be like a nightmare so it's like when you say get agreement, it puts them on edge because they know you can't really get full agreement. So the better thing to say is that you're going to try to dis to, um, to arrive at a consensus. 
kind of the same thing but slightly more elegant to say it that way so you're going to arrive at a consensus so you're going to elicit feedback you're going to try to get feedback on whatever it is that you're doing so use consensus and use feedback instead of using agreement because agreement is sometimes impossible um the other thing that people say a lot of is you know i'm gonna have meetings to talk about xyz i'm gonna have meetings um to talk about the process or i'm gonna have a meeting to talk about the workflow or you know whatever you're having a meeting now that is actually what you're doing and it sounds okay but it's better if you say i'm gonna have iterations of this having a meeting sounds good but if you're going to say i'm having meetings on the design on the workflow on the mock-ups if you say i'm going to have iterations over the design iterations over the workflow it's just more elegant because they know iterations means it's going to be a series of um meetings or rounds of meetings because it's not going to be done necessarily in the first go but if you say you have a meeting on the mock-up and then another meeting to follow that one up and another one it's just it's the same idea, but it's not as elegant, right? So just say you're going to have iterations. Use the word iterations instead of having a meeting. Uh, that's, that's a better way to say it. The other thing that people say a lot of is, um, I'm going to put it in Jira, for example. I'm going to put it in Confluence. I'm going to create a Word document. You know, whatever the tool is that you're using, they'd like to insert the name of the tool and say they're going to do it in that tool. And even though that's not wrong, that's what you're doing, it's not the most elegant way to say it. So instead of saying, I'm going to create a PowerPoint, I'm going to create a Word document, I'm going to put it in Jira, I'm going to go create ALM, you know, HBLM uh, test cases, I'm going to go do Q tests, whatever. Instead of using the name of the actual tool, just say you're going to go create documentation. In the case of, you know, like writing requirements, or you're going to create test cases. Like you could say, I'm going to create documentation and that kind of covers all of what they anticipate documentation to be, which is all of your requirements, your use cases, your mockups, your designs, all of that stuff. You don't have to itemize all of them. You just say you're gonna create documentation and they'll understand that. Because remember, if you're talking to executives, you're talking to management, they're not really concerned about the, the individual manual details of what you're doing. They really wanna get the big picture. So by saying creating documentation, you kind of just covered all of what you're going to be doing um, in that one phrase. The other thing that people say a lot of is, I'm going to show this to John, I'm going to show this to Mary, I'm going to show this to Anna. Um, and Anna, John and Mary could be managers themselves or whatever. But you tend to use the word show a lot. I'm going to show this. Instead of using the word show, it's more elegant and better if you use the word present. I'm going to present this to Anna, I'm going to present this to Mark. Um, or you could say, I'm going to do a walkthrough with you know, the operations team, we're going to walk this through with the CEO, I'm going to do a walkthrough with whoever, right? So using the words walkthrough or the words present is much more elegant, is much better than just saying I'm going to show it. The other thing is when there is, you know, a missing requirement. Let's say that you, you did your best solicitation and at the end of the day, you still miss something. That happens to everybody, okay? So you missed a requirement and now you have to kind of fix it. So the most common thing that people say is that we're going to do this fix. We're going to fix this missing requirement. You know, we have to fix this and they use the word fix a lot. But you know what I'm going to say, right? There's a more elegant way to say that. <laughs> you don't just say fix things. You'd say, I'm going to complete the workflow. Okay, you're gonna complete the workflow. You're gonna close the gaps. You're gonna close the gaps, you're gonna complete something. So let's not use fix. Let's use complete or close the gap. And this, again, you're talking to executives, you're talking to managers, you're talking to people above you. So you wanna make sure that you're presenting yourself the best way. You don't really wanna be going there, so, oh, I wanna fix something like you've broken things. You haven't broken anything, okay? You just need to close the gap and you need to complete the workflow. Okay. Okay. So the other thing that happens as well is, you know, when you're talking to your executives and you're talking to your managers and, um, you have to go back to them about something. So they've told you all of their opinions, you've gotten their feedback and the next, 
the next thing that you have to do is to go evaluate that do some other work on it maybe come up with a new flow whatever you got stuff to do and you have to come back and show it to them so we tend to always say i'm going to come back to you notice i just said that too but i'm talking to you so it's okay <laughs> right so you say to your, your executives i'm going to come back to you you know i'm going to come back with xyz and that's okay it's not wrong it's okay but a more elegant way to say that would be these are going to be my next steps so use next steps instead of come back okay so use the word next step so they know that this is what's happening next and it's just more elegant more professional better for you to say it that way the other thing and i know i've been saying the other thing a lot <laughs> it's just it's what i'm saying right now the thing that i've heard a lot of uh, when people are giving their suggestions so we're having a meeting and everybody is you know thinking through a problem and then somebody has a suggestion and they say what we should do is blah 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 sounds great right but the problem when you say what we should do it feels very prescriptive and it feels like you are dictating what the solution is where you might just have a piece of the solution and there may be other people that can chime in and add to it and then if you say what we should do is xyz if somebody else has a conflicting um, opinion then they feel like they have to kind of say no we should do this instead and then it feels very competitive which in a way we want that competition for five ideas but you want it to be in a very professional and open to discussion you need to have open ideas right you don't want it to feel like it's a it's combative so instead of saying what we should do is blah 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 you'd want to say what would be helpful is blah 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 so you you frame the problem and then you say what would be helpful is if we could blah 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 that just helps to set the stage that you're looking for ways to help with the problem and that you're not like forcing your opinion on everybody else and it's okay if somebody thinks something else is more helpful or they have another way to do it do you see what i mean so those are the things that i think you could transpose in how you're you're talking right now to talk more like a business analyst especially and again particularly when you are talking to executives and you're talking to managers so that they can understand what you're saying. You can present yourself as a knowledgeable, confident professional and you're using the speech that they understand and you're meeting them at their level. Okay. So that's what I have to discuss with you today. I hope this video was useful. If you found it useful, please like and subscribe and also go to my website and join my mailing list y'all i need you to go to my website put your email in and click on that submit it comes to me i see that all of these people are on my mailing list and then as you know we send you notifications or whatever i have new stuff i want to share i can send it etc so it's a good thing you know you're not losing so go do that like the video share the video comment on the video and i will see you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching take care